Hello everyone, back to into today's video, doing the second uh, single model roundup video for the autumn of 2016. Today we're going to get 10 long range models together and see what they're showing for the uh, next season. We did the first update last month, back in June, it's a bit of a mixed bag, but the overall idea was for quite a westerly Atlantic driven autumn. Uh, we'll see whether that idea is still in play um, for today's second long range model update. Remember we did the analogues last week, had a look at some analogues um, that our good friend James Ackrell sent through. You can find that on the autumn updates page. This video will be added to the autumn updates page later on today with a written summary as well. So you can't watch the only one go, there will be a written summary um, later on today. In any case, the video will kept, be kept around Gazzo is indefinitely, so you'll be able to come back watch it whenever you would like or need to. Um, so I'm going to get on with that in a second. Before I get on with that, though, if I can just say about our charity fundraiser, it concludes today, throughout July, we've been raising money for the Warwickshire and Northamptonshire Air Ambulance. And this is the final day of our charity fundraiser. So a big thank to everybody that's donated uh, through the course of July. You've still got a few hours left to donate. I'm going to draw a line on it uh, later on this evening and I'll have a grand um, have a grand total of how much we've raised adding together gift aid uh, later on um, today or possibly tomorrow morning. I will do a video that uh, sets out exactly how much we have managed to uh, raise. So when I'm doing this video on Friday evening, our current balance stands at £1,056.54. I'm not sure whether that will have ticked up at all by the time you're watching this on Sunday. Uh, fingers crossed it might have done. Um, but even if it hasn't, it's been a fantastic response. We have had an amazing uh, amazing response to this. I never expected uh, this sort of money to be raised via the viewers and readers, uh, via the viewers and readers of Gazworth. I know the uh, Air Ambulance are also very, very pleased with us for doing this. So if you want to donate in the uh, few hours that's left, all you have to do is come to our Just Giving page. I've got the um, Just Giving page here, so this is it. Um, but I'm going to leave the uh, link in the description box at YouTube. You'll also be able to find the link uh, across Gazworth. So click that, come to this page. You know it's the right page because you've got the Gazworth logo. It also says Gavin's page. And there's our story for why we're raising this money. The most important point, however, is the yellow donate button. You just click that and you go to another page where very, very safely and securely you'll be able to put in your um, credit or debit card details and just donate whatever you want. Justgiving.com is a secure website, so there's no worries about your card details. It's a very, very safe and secure website. So just donate whatever you want or can afford for the Warwickshire Air Ambulance. Big thank you doing that. You can also donate via text, and this is how you do it. Um, so you just use our code, which is GWVS77, and the amount you would like to donate, this is set to £5, it's anything from £1 upwards, and you just simply text that to 770, and that will immediately um, go to the charity via Just Giving. So if you pay as you go, then it'll just be taken off the balance. If you pay via a bill, it'll be added to your next bill cycle. Um, but your mobile phone provider, for example, Vodafone, but also Orange O2 are part of this as well, they will pay the money out straight away. Uh, so there'll be no messing around. They pay the money straight away, and then you pay them when you come to uh, pay your bill. Um, a huge thank you to everybody that's donated this. Uh, I have to say that from the bottom of my heart, really, uh, that I never uh, believed or expected we'd get to over a thousand pounds for this fundraising effort. The Warwickshire and Northamptonshire Air Ambulance is a completely charitable organisation. They don't get any money from the government via taxation of the National Health Service. Uh, so everything from a helicopter right down to the smallest classes has to be paid for via charitable donations. Uh, they do 1,000 call-outs a year, and each call-out costs £1,700. So it gives you an idea of the uh, money that's involved to keep the show on the road or to keep the helicopter in the air. So if you enjoy what we do at Gas Service, we've always been free of charge, always have been, always will be. The videos... 
are there for you as you need and want them. As are the written posts, Terry Scully, everything at the website is totally free. We get our money, generate our revenue from ads. That's the way we're going to be staying. We're not going to be moving to a subscription or pay-per-view model anytime soon. So I just ask you to enjoy what we do at Gazzo as you make this little contribution uh, to the charity. That means so much to myself and to my family as well. And a huge thank you to everybody that has done that. Remember, you've got until this evening uh, to donate, and then I'll be drawing the uh, charity fundraiser from Gazzo.com for the Warwickshire and Northamptonshire Air Ambulance to a close. Really big thank you uh, to everybody for doing that. Right, let's get on with the uh, second update for the autumn of uh, 2016. We're going to start off with the Russian model. Uh, now, what I've got to say is that uh, the first three models that we're going to use are not covering the full autumn period. They're going from August to October. They don't quite stretch out into the autumn. Then all the other models that we're going to use will cover that critical uh, September to November period. Um, you can find most of the uh, models on the links page, so you can find the links to these models, or most of them anyway, on the links page. The other thing I've got to say is that without one model uh, this month, we haven't had an update, very unfortunately and sadly, haven't had an update from the Beijing Climate Centre, so we're without that model for this second update. Hopefully, it'll be back with us uh, next month for the final autumn update. If it does update in the next day or so, I'll do a blog uh, post about it. Um, but we've got plenty of models to be going on. So we're going to start off with Russian models. This is probability, temperature probability, first of all. This is taking us from August to October. And uh, we've got these red colours here around the UK. So the Russian model is predicting above average probability for a warmer than average period from August to October. Looks quite a warm period there. Uh, precipitation uh, probability is generally coming out average, maybe even hinting to be a little bit above average um, across uh, southeastern parts of the country perhaps, but overall close to average precipitation, above average temperatures for August to October. Next model we're going to look at is the APEC model. Now this is a uh, model I don't often use because it tends to be the last model to update, and uh, usually I'm doing the video um, before it's updated, so that's why I don't tend to use this a great deal. But we're very late, actually, uh, just the way the calendar's worked out. We're very late with the uh, model update this month, so uh, I'm able to include the APEC. The APEC model is a, collab is a collaboration of various meta agencies. I think their main base is in the Southern Hemisphere, so, for example, there's the Bureau of, uh, Bureau of Meteorology, in Australia. I think the JMA is involved in this operation. I think the Korean model is involved, uh, Korean uh, metates is involved in this as well. So it's a, a collaboration of various uh, met agencies coming together to produce uh, this experimental model. And we're looking at 500 middle hour heights here for August to October. Um, what model is doing is placing above average heights generally to the south of us and near normal heights uh, to the north. So the jet stream generally is going to the north of the country here, I would have thought. It implies quite a warm or mild autumn or August to October, anyway, early autumn, let's say. Um, and perhaps wettish in the north and west, but not too bad in terms of precipitation in the south and the east. The uh, temperature anomaly is backing that up. It's coming out generally warmer than average for uh, August to October. And the precipitation anomaly generally coming out close to average, but it does seem to be being a bit wetter than average to the north of the country. So uh, generally it's quite an Atlantic-driven period. Um, this from August to October, milder than average temperatures, warmer than average temperatures. Near normal precipitation may be, especially for the north, a little bit on the warmer than average side. The next model to look at, again, this is just going from August to October, is the JMA. Um, I did the JMA free monthly update 
on its own uh, a couple of weeks ago. So if you haven't seen that yet, um, you can check that out. It's uh, at YouTube, uh, at our YouTube channel. Um, so we broke down uh, the months of August, September, October and looked at them individually, seeing what model uh, was showing on a month-by-month basis. I haven't got time to go through everything uh, for this update because I've got all these other models to get through. So I'm just going to show you the three monthly anomalies in terms of heights, uh, temperature and precipitation. So as a three monthly anomaly for uh, August to October, very similar to the APEC actually, uh, above average heights to the south and uh, near normal to below average heights uh, to the north, the jet stream probably running through the north of the country rather like that. So similar to the APEC model, it's going for above average temperatures, a warmer than average three monthly period from uh, August to October uh, there. And in terms of precipitation, uh, it's generally a bit wetter. So it is wetter than the APEC. Um, most places coming out with above average rainfall. The wind arrows for the next three months show the mean wind direction of the uh, three months from August to October. Looks like this. You probably can't work it out all that well, but um, it's generally westerly uh, with the wind arrows. They are generally pointing into UK from the west, indicating an Atlantic-driven three-monthly period. So already we've got a trend here amongst these bars, generally milder than average temperatures, Precipitation may be hinting at a bit, being a bit above average, especially from the north, and generally Atlantic driven. Atlantic driven was uh, the signal that we had going on last month when we did the first uh, update for the autumn. Bearing in mind, all those first three models just cover August to October, and everything you see from now on is going to be covering the full autumn period. So we're going to look at the uh, Brazilian models uh, model next. We're going to do the Americas, starting in South America with the Brazilian model. Um, this is a 500 millibar uh, height anomaly. Always different with this in that blue is extrapolating to high pressure, above average uh, heights, and red, uh, pink, yellow, bright colours is extrapolating to low pressure, below average heights. Any other heights in anomaly, that's the other way around. But this one, <laughs> just to catch us out, I think, kind of does things different. Now, this is a very odd-looking uh, 500 millibar height anomaly because we've got this great big white area here covering most of Europe. The British Isles is included. It does have uh, above-average heights to the west of us. Um, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. It's very hard to decipher. There's some sort of ridge there and maybe a bit of a trough there. Um, so it probably could place us on the cooler side of a jet, have a little bit uh, of an unsettled water. I'm not sure really what that height anomaly is showing. The temperature anomaly, uh, and this has actually got a bit wrong. So what I'm going to do is just change this over. Uh, I hope you bear with me. So we're going to have a look at September, October, November temperature anomalies. That's the right chart. Just better go back. Make sure that's right. Yes, it was September, October, November. Right, that's okay. Um, so sorry about that. Uh, this is the temperature anomaly for September, October, and it's been a very, very long day. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. So um, the temperature anomaly for uh, the autumn is coming out above average. Okay, we've got above average temperatures for the autumn. And then let's see what's going to happen for precipitation. That is wrong as well. So if I just very quickly change this over. This isn't very professional of me. Sorry about this. Uh, there you go. This is precipitation anomaly, and it's wetter than average. So I think that rather bizarre-looking height anomaly is doing something uh, like this. It has a ridge for the autumn to the west of us. I mean, I'm sure there's probably some sort of trough here, although it is near normal with the heights. Um, maybe that the chart's a bit wrong. That should be more vibrant in colour here. Should be sort of uh, yellow, orange, pinky type colours indicating a trough. The upshot in terms of the temperature anomaly is still above average. A warm and average autumn is expected, but also significantly wetter than average. Uh, really quite a wet autumn indeed being signaled there uh, from the Brazilian model. Right, go on, let's have a look at the Canadian model, because we've done can sips uh, Saturday again. That was at the start of the month. Uh, we're just going to have a look at the three-monthly anomaly for the autumn. 
um, starting with mean sea level pressure. Uh, what it's going for, it's got a ridge uh, down to the southwest of us, it's all sides there. Low pressure to the north, so it's quite an Atlantic driven setup. This, uh, with the jet stream coming through the country rather like that. So, again, it does imply quite Atlantic driven weather this autumn. There is a trend here amongst these bonds I've looked at so far, uh, and it's very similar to the trend that we had going on last month. Uh, the temperature anomaly, that is coming out generally a little bit above average. So, again, that's a trend that is apparent throughout this uh, this update. Above average temperatures. I think all models that we've looked at so far has given us above average temperatures. Precipitation, um, that's coming out near normal. No great trend there for precipitation for the three months uh, for the autumn of 2016. Right, the experimental NASA model is next. Uh, these again, 500 bit of our heights, it's placing above average heights to the north, generally to the east of us, there's a trough out to the west. So this is a little bit different, but it means that the flow is going something like that. It's rather a complicated looking chart, and you have to go over, uh, to, um, over to that side of the chart to see how that uh, translates. Essentially, what it's doing is building a ridge to the northeast of us, has a trough to the southwest. In between, we're bringing up the air from the south. So you'll not be surprised to know that is a fairly warm signal. So again, here we are off again. Uh, temperature anomalies coming out warmer than average uh, for the autumn with the NASA model. Precipitation uh, is close to normal, although it hints at being a bit wetter than average to the west of us. So it's quite Atlantic driven again. It implies the wettest weather is to the west, but those temperatures look pretty warm. Warm, wet autumn sums it up. Who, <coughs> excuse me, I bet it's out. Goth there, sorry about that. Who van den Duel next, our good friend Hoog. And uh, what we see here is a 500 millibar height anomaly uh, chart based on Hoog's analogs. So this is a little bit different. It's not a, it's not a generic model showing this out. This has, this has human interpretation from Hoog van der Duel himself. Hoog has looked at uh, sea surface temperature anomalies across the uh, world last month. This was generated in June. And then from those sea surface temperature anomalies, he's created an analog forecast going forward. So this is how the 500 bit of our heights look for the autumn. And generally, it's above average heights to the north and down across the UK, very similar to the NASA model in some ways, with a trough in the Atlantic. And the jet stream again is doing something like that. So what do temperature, uh, temperatures do? Look at this, they're warmer than average. Everything we've looked at so far has gone for a warmer than average autumn. Credible agreement for temperatures to be above average this autumn. The precipitation anomaly is generally coming out. Uh, I'm going to just check the scale. So the um, precipitation anomaly generally coming out a bit drier than average with the wettest weather with the low pressure out to the west. Uh, so a fairly dryish autumn and also warmer than average. That's the prediction from Hugh Van and Duel. Bit of an Indian summer, probably, uh, dare I say it. The final model from the Americas is from uh, CFSV2. So this is um, Noah's model uh, themselves. Uh, CFSV2, 700 bit of our heights, placing a ridge to the south. Otherwise, not a great deal else to go on. Jet stream is probably running through off the Atlantic like that. So I would have assume this is quite an Atlantic driven autumn once again. Temperature anomaly is no real signal. It's warmer than average generally to the north. Otherwise it's just near normal uh, with the temperature anomalies. The precipitation anomaly generally coming out wetter than average particularly to the north and west drier than average just here. So obviously we've got high pressure through this area. We've got low pressure up here. And I think it basically does imply, if I pull that back, and we do something like that, I think it does imply another Atlantic-driven uh, autumn coming up. Again, it's a trend that we've got going on here across all models, really, to be quite Atlantic-driven with the autumn 
Temperatures are okay. This model is placing temperatures near normal. It's probably because it's just a weak signal. Um, temperatures generally coming out warm and average. Precipitation close to average. Maybe hinting, especially to the northwest, being a bit above average. We're coming to the end now. So we've got the Jamstack IOD next. Uh, once again, look at this. Temperature anomaly is coming out warmer than average. Notice that for uh, France, Germany, central parts of Europe, those temperature anomalies are a bit cooler than average. I'm not sure how that works out with the UK. Warmer than average, but anyway, that's what the model is doing. It looks like generally a mild autumn there. Precipitation. Uh, that's coming out wetter than average generally for most of the UK, driving average to the south. So again, I think it implies Atlantic driven. We've got a ridge somewhere around here. We've got low pressure up here. We're probably bringing a jet stream through the country like that. It implies again everything piling in off the Atlantic for this autumn. There's been a complete and total washout if you want any cold weather, I have to say. Uh, I'm very rare that you get such a strong signal, um, but I can only tell you what models are showing, and that is what they're doing uh, for this autumn. Very, 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 very strong signal for a warmer than average autumn. So the final model is our own. It's the UK Met Office, the Glow C5. Uh, uh, this is mean sea level pressure. Um, so uh, it's again quite Atlantic driven. It's got a ridge down to the southwest of us, low pressure to the north. Little bit different this one in that the um, the trough, the low pressure is generally centered to the northeast. I think so. What this is doing, it's placing the jet stream on a bit of a northwest southeast alignment, a little bit like that, and then pull it back around there. So it is still Atlantic driven, but that slight difference in the orientation of the trough of a ridge means that we have a slightly cooler signal here. Most parts of the country are coming out. Uh, close to average, the north and west actually seem to be a bit cooler than average. The south and east seem to be a bit milder than average. And the real warmth with this is pushed right away to the east and northeast of Europe. So out of all models we've looked at, this is the coolest. It isn't by any means a cold chart, but haven't had anything to go on if you want cooler and average weather this autumn. And this is the coolest chart that we've seen in terms of a temperature anomaly throughout these 10 models. Precipitation also coming out significantly wetter than average as well. Um, and interestingly, the wettest conditions are probably being centred slightly to the south and east. It is a bit drier to the north and west. Um, and that's about that's about it, really. Uh, that's all we've got to go on from these 10 models. Uh, and they're a bit of a write-off if you want cold weather for this autumn. So, uh, I mean, it's a really strong signal there from just about all models, except UK Met, which is a bit cooler. But just about all models are going significantly warmer than average autumn. Uh, also looks quite unsettled as well. Many models are at least hinting at being above average with the rainfall, especially to the north and west. Some of them, such as UK Met, just has a very wet autumn across the whole country, really. Uh, and it looks very Atlantic-driven. I think that is the message again from this second update. A very Atlantic-driven, mild, wet, possibly, if it goes on late on into the autumn, stormy-type uh, weather pattern is setting up so uh that's how it's all for the second update it's a follow-on from the first update really the trend is still there from the first update in fact it's strengthened atlantic driven warm and average temperatures uh and probably with atlantic driven pattern you don't expect it to be quite wet particularly to the north west maybe stormy too caveat being we've been without the Beige climate center overly that we'll be back on stream uh next month Right, so that's it for the second uh, update. How long have I gone on for? We've gone on for just under 25 minutes, so not too bad. Um, I'm going to place this on the autumn updates page later on today uh, with a written summary, so you'll be able to come back and watch this video uh, whenever you want. Also, read written summary as well. 
Uh, next week, we'll be having a look at some more analogues from James. So uh, that'll be uh, next week's update. Um, last week's analogues were looking at uh, autumns that were El Nino to La Nina autumns. Next week's uh, analogues will look at autumns that are going from El Nino to Enso Neutral. And that's really after yesterday's Enso update, where we were implying the chance, anyway, of having Enso Neutral conditions into the autumn. Right, so at 25 minutes, I'll uh, say goodbye and uh, thanks for watching on uh, this Sunday. And don't forget to donate to the Warwickshire North Hampshire uh, Ambulance if you haven't yet done so. Big thank you to those that have. Uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.